come on in, come on in. I'm sitting in the corner in my living room because we are going to talk some makeup and some fashion news. Oh, well, I'm starting off with just a little of advanced therapy from Aquaphor, just to have it on my lips as I'm doing the rest of my face. But first of all, how was y'all week? It's been a quick one because I mean, I just feel like it went by really fast. But I wanted to walk through my makeup routine. Well, my current makeup routine. I feel like this always changes every few months with the seasons. And also when my skin is adjusting to different things, I suffer from why well, I, I was suffering more last year and years prior from cystic acne, um, hormonal and food allergy related, come to find out. Um, and now I'm, I have still a lot of hyperpigmentation and marks. I still get some acne when I'm about to have my cycle, um, but they're really small now. And one of the products I've actually been using the last um, 90 days is this master plan from Epilogic. Uh, I look, it's it's literally empty. Like the last the last bit of serum is like literally at the top because it goes from top to bottom. But this, and it's a black owned brand the woman behind it she is a plastic surgeon based here in brooklyn she is doing her thing her packaging is amazing too but since i've been using that serum my face doesn't break out as bad anymore when i do have breakouts it's very surface level i literally have two pimples right here and that was not always the case so i'm super grateful and this is without i have not had a facial in a very long time um Last time I got a facial, something was up with the with the um, esthetician. Like mentally, she had an issue going on with the owner, and I don't know what why she chose me that day. But the way that she did my extractions were really hard, and because I'm like, okay, maybe my cystic acne is like a challenge for her. I just kind of was like, okay, all right, put some elbow grease in it, girl. But it actually scarred my face really badly. And like she had to get fired type of thing. Um, and not, nothing else happened of it. It's just, it is what it is type of thing. I know a lot of people were just like, oh my God, you should have sued. First of all, don't know I got time or money for all of that right now, okay? And plus it's like, it was a black owned um, shop, um, salon, and I... I didn't want to go through that and I really just think it was that particular person's issue and she was gone. So that's all that mattered to me. But I was almost clear of my hyperpigmentation and it just got super aggressive after that. So this is almost like a year of me trying to clear it up. And it's not bad, like at least it's not that much texture still. So the first thing I do whenever I'm doing my makeup after I apply like my serums, um, I really only apply this serum, a um, face cream, which I use two different ones in the winter and fall versus spring and summer. Um, and then I do a sunscreen over top of that and some eye cream as well. But the first thing I do, I go in with the Bobbi Brown, um, skin corrector stick in deep peach. I'm gonna use my little mirror here just so I can make sure I'm accurate with y'all. Um, and I just put it in these areas where I see my little spots, even here. I have always had big cheeks, so sometimes I feel like they drape down if I'm not sculpting regularly. So, you know, with the gua sha thing, I don't even know how to really do it. I'm gonna learn more about it this year. Um, but, yep, it's a lot of correcting, right? And then I go in really softly with this, um, Spectrum and KJH, uh, number three brush, and I just sweep it over. But how about Super Bowl Sunday? Well, really, the Rihanna concert. I thought... I felt like that football game was really short. I feel like football normally is super long. Like, it's like it's never ending. That and baseball. And then when it came time for Rihanna to come out, it was super exciting. I went with my friends to, um, well, my friend invited me 
to Dumbo House. Kayla Walker, she invited me to Dumbo House, so we went over there. We were having a good time. Um, and a lot of other cool girls were there too. So it was a cool bonding situation. And then when Rihanna came out, the whole room got so loud and crazy. It was hilarious. And I did feel like the ratio of women to men was so, was so, such a harsh difference. Um, it was hilarious to me. I'm like, wow, this is Super Bowl Sunday. It's a Rihanna, it's a Rihanna concert. It's not even, I don't know who these people are playing football. But I felt like there was a lot of people that talked about it over this week that were really unsatisfied with the performance. And I'm just like, guys, she's pregnant. Like the bump is bumping, number one. Number two, postpartum. She's still within her postpartum stage of the first baby. Um, she hasn't created any new music. This is what she's giving us. I'm going to apply a little bit more because I think I brushed too hard on that part. Um, she's giving what she has. And honestly, I think she was just truly enjoying the moment. Um, and another thing, she wasn't so bumpy that she couldn't hide it. She could have chosen to wear something else to hide the baby bump because we all know Rihanna does do a lot of oversized looks. She didn't have to share that with us. She didn't have to, but I think because of, you know, her just wanting to be careful too, like she wasn't going to move all about the stage. You know, she was like, you know what? I'll share it with them. I'll share it with them and this is how I'll do it and I can't do too much and I honestly think it, she must not have known that she was pregnant when she signed the contract with the Super Bowl because I'm sure she would have done like all kinds of dancing, jumping, hoopla and all that other stuff but you want to be careful with her at this stage right she must be first going into second trimester and I'm just like I was so happy I love the performance it gave us the dose that we all needed because we've been begging for new music, right? We've been begging for her to show some interest in music. And it was our little micro dose. It might be our last dose, but I'm kind of hopeful that it's not. I think she looked amazing. I love the tribute. If that was intentionally a tribute to Andre Leon Talley, I loved it. I love the red look anyway. That Loewe breastplate, yeah, they better they better go ham in making that because the girls want it. The girls want it. I heard the girls. We all said we want it. So... I was super pleased with the performance and super grateful because I'm like, she ain't had to show us. She ain't had to show us. She could have just like did a whole other thing, but she did what she did. The dancers did what they did. Um, what's that girl's name? Paris, the choreographer. She did what she did. I just learned about her ass and I love it. I, I, I love her. So, and I, I wouldn't consider myself like, Rihanna Navy Nation or whatever it's called. I've always loved her because she's a Caribbean girl. She just has super dope swag. I think Beyonce, hands down, had the best Super Bowl performance in my lifetime. Um, but Rihanna had an amazing performance for what she could do. And I think people need to back up off of her. So anyway, I just don't like how harsh we were. Like, I, I feel like at times society could be so harsh against people going through real life things and it's unnecessary. Um, and I feel like a lot of people's commentary was just like, okay, like, we don't know her situation. She's doing this. It's pretty dope. Back off. You know, it's a concert. Anyway, and then she came out with the Vogue, British, the British Vogue cover with her baby and ASAP. Let me tell you something. Uh, I truly think, oh, by the way, this is Dior um, Skin Correct in 3N. Um, I truly believe that Rihanna was going to reveal her son with this British Vogue cover. And because someone was going to leak the images of her son in the back of that car, she was forced to leak her own images. And that I hate. And that's why I was so happy that she chose this way to prove, to show us that she was pregnant because she was kind of stripping. She was stripped away of that with her first baby. We took that away because society is wild, right? Um, and people are crazy. So I would, that's another reason why I was like, you know what? This is really special because I do think that cover was, a, was supposed to be his debut. 
to, to the world. And that sucks that it was taken away. Um, but she looks amazing. It, it's, it's giving, um, it's giving Tina Turner, which I have an affinity for, okay? I freaking love Tina Turner. But I love the cover. ASAP, come on, house husband. Come on. I'm not. That's all I'm going to say. Listen. But I feel like it's okay to have that dynamic. And even my father was a creative. So he, he was a photographer, is a photographer. But for the most part, he stayed home with me when my mom worked um, 12 to 16 hour shifts at the hospital. Um, so in my world, I am very used to having my father mainly in the home taking care of meals, taking care of my homework with me, getting me to and from school. He was also my coach for all my sports that I played. Um, I was definitely a daddy's girl, but I grew up in a home where my father spent a lot of time with me taking care of the household if he wasn't on assignment. So I'm here for house husbands um, and couples splitting responsibility and respecting each other for what each other covers i'm here for that um but anyway oh snap i forgot one step i do use um the refi so much that the logo's gone the eyebrow gel and i just put it on usually i put this on when i whenever i do my skincare i do wipe my eyebrows down just to make sure that there's no like oil excess and stuff like that on my eyebrows but I thoroughly go through these hairs that just want to do what they want to do anyway. And I would say like between this and like the Anastasia um, brow gel, like they do pretty good, but like my brows do what they want. Like there's nothing, I have yet to find something. I want to do like that soap thing that people use, but these, these things don't listen to nobody but themselves and God. Okay. Um, so I just laid them down and go forth with that now that new york fashion week is at a close i will definitely be going in with further detail and review to share my sentiments on what i think about all the collections because overall honey i loved a lot of collections at the end of the day um fall fashion will always be my favorite I am not a big um, spring summer gal. You know, she's short lived. So it's like, okay, all right. Um, I'm wearing, and I have to probably get some more today, Chanel Le Tint in color B70. She's done. She's basically done, but she gave, she gave me a little bit. I just pump her out. Um, and I'm gonna just go full, full coverage with her. Um, but yeah, overall, I saw some really beautiful, I kind of start from the center of my face and then go out, but I saw some really beautiful pieces um, from Carolina Herrera, Al Chizura. Michael Kors had some really beautiful, listen, at the end of the day, I am not a big MK, that level, no thanks. Michael Kors though, Michael Kors, he is a pillar in American fashion, okay? Um, also, I'm not gonna say where exactly, but like, I think he lives down the street from my office in the city because I saw him coming out of a car one day and they were like unloading all his personals um, from the car onto the sidewalk and it was like a doorman building. So I was like, oh, y'all live here? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so that was kind of exciting. I've always loved him. He's, he's cool. Um, I love him and his mom's dynamic as well. But anyway, um, Michael Kors, Ultra Zura, Brandon Maxwell has some beautiful pieces. Um, who who else? Pruenza Schuler, Kate and Y. I mean, the lust. It, it was the textures for me, and also it's just it's not about like this upcoming fall season. You can tell that the designers are designing. They like what Denmark say about Balenciaga. I got back to design. I'm sure you did because, sir. Anyway, we'll get to that. 
but literally the aesthetic the craftsmanship as far as like the tailoring that detail i saw a lot of that on the runway just like gracing over some of the images i would see pop up and i'm like this this is this is where i truly love fashion like there's been a lot of gimmicky things like i'm sure once we see like paris fashion week roll out we're gonna see some like cartoonish fashions you know that's a big theme right now but i feel like they're kind of going back to their to their roots of design and i think that that's amazing it's and plus it, it's not that it's more wearable but it just has more longevity and you know there's a lot more classic pieces that mix into these situations you know that are forever time um timeless pieces i'm sorry if y'all hear that construction going on y'all know i'm over that building but it doesn't look like it's nowhere near done, but it's going to be a great senior citizen's home when, once it's finished. But anyway, yeah, I'm just like lightly, I don't even know where this brush is from, but it's a very dense brush and I'm just lightly sweeping it over everything. And that is me getting covered. Um, and sometimes I, I, I used to go underneath with my contour and then like lightly cover it. But in, these days... I'm not doing that anymore. I'm gonna put this to the side so I remember to get more. And I always use like my cap to do, to put my liquids on it because I don't like putting it into my skin to warm it up and then it seeps into my skin more than it does on my face. So I don't do that. But after I put on my foundation, I go in with the Fenty Truffle uh, Contour Match Stick. And I go in first from the beginning of my eyebrow and I just do a little tap like that and I go very light down my nose in here and do the same on this side obviously um, and I put a little here in the eye cre crease um, and then if my forehead is showing which these days it is because I'm wearing my hair parted on the side and whatnot I, I do a little dart there a little dart there and then I also I want to wait for this to dry down a little bit more but while I'm waiting I will take this um, number 10 brush from the same collection and I'm going to blend in on the contour on my nose speaking of Denmark right when we said we get back to Denmark so he released that statement saying Oh, I learned a lot. I'm getting back to the basics of design. Let me tell you something. And I'm just going to be really honest. If that was a black male designer, he would have been fired. Him and his whole crew. Period. Um, he said it was the hardest time of his life. Okay. Um, fine. Understood. You, but was he ever really scared for his job? I don't know. And I feel like at the end of the day, um, I just don't think it's right that he gets to keep his position there. Um, I'm not even the slightest, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not even the slightest bit curious to know what his next collection is going to look like. Um, but also, I'm very happy with the Balenciaga pieces I have in my closet prior to all of those collections except for my i have a pair of heels from january 2020 oh last year last january i bought a pair of heels from their collection and it does give like that bdsm kind of vibe and i haven't worn them i don't know how i feel about them but i'm i'm not really i'm not wowed by his statement I'm not feeling a big deal of remorse. I'm not excited about what he wants to show and prove. Like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't know if a lot of people feel this way. I haven't really talked to any of my other fashion friends. Um, but it's, all right, cool. Like, he, he gets to keep his job. They all get to keep their job. Cool. It's... 
anyway so i'm gonna go in and i'm gonna go from this area and just lightly because i do have like that structure already but i just like to create like a little bit of a shadow effect um and then i go on this side and i have like this this like dip in my chin here and i like to just contour it to just kind of align it if that makes any sense but then we found out that Pharrell Williams is going to be the creative director over men's Louis Vuitton. Now, a lot of people had a lot of thoughts about this, huh? I know, I know. It's a thing, it's a thing. Okay, here's, here, here's the reality. Pharrell Williams is a very big trendsetter. That capsule that he did with Chanel sold out, gone. All the girls are hurt feeling, have hurt feelings because they did not score their loafers from Chanel when he did that capsule with them, right? And that, that's that's the truth, and that's fine. Um, he has always been a trendsetter in music and in fashion. Some people will throw in this argument: Khalees helped him create his style. Truth be told. Once upon a time, there are legends at Atrium, New York, um, where I worked here uh, when I was in college, that he brought in Khalees. No, no, no. Actually, Khalees used to work at Atrium, New York. She used to work there. And <clears throat> when she got um, signed or started working with Pharrell, he was wearing like fur coats and cowboy hats. Again, very out there. He's always been out of the box, but like she supposedly they say like trying to refine his style when they start working together um and she's mother she's mother when it comes to a lot of things you know so i hear that argument and i get it and i also get that he himself is a trendsetter in his own way um i have an issue because you know i don't have an issue with him being the creative director my only thing is like sometimes when certain things are brought up i'm like damn like they're not going to speak on it at all like that's kind of sucky i think it was um the middle of last year Kalise went live at one point and said that beyonce used a part of her music to create um i don't even remember what song it was Energy was the song called Energy, but it was a song off Beyonce's Renaissance album. And Khalees claimed that you know she did not ask her to use a snippet of the song. I could not find or hear that part of Khalees' song in Beyonce's song, and I'm like, okay, I was trying my best, but it was a whole debacle. And apparently, she also exposed that Pharrell, you know, her and Pharrell's relationship was not really pulled together tightly. That he did some things that weren't right by her regarding music and 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 credit and and title and all that other stuff. So because she went out there and said these things, you know, the the. The Beehive didn't really attack her like they normally attack other people talking madness about Beyonce. So there must have been some level of truth or some level of the people want to know more or need to know more. And Pharrell, I don't think he's ever spoke about it. He never like, not to admit it, but just like say, you know, nothing about Khalees is my sister. I love her X, Y, Z. Like I never heard of anything. So I'm just a little disappointed about that situation. I just felt. Like he could have done better but also you know they did interview a lot of designers uh, because that's the thing like he's not specifically a designer but he can direct creatively right um but they were interviewing certain people for a very long time and it takes a lot to prepare present all that stuff to people like lvmh um, and they didn't go like Martine Rose. That would have been really exciting for her to get the role. And I think that's what a lot of people's beef is. Um, but, you know, you got, you had Virgil and then it's like Pharrell. And I feel like it's the same. I mean, obviously, Virgil didn't get a chance to present a certain amount of work in his lifetime. But what he did share was very special. Um, Pharrell has... A very long line of work um, I'm excited to see what comes of it I think the first collection will be in June uh, for menswear and who knows what if he gets like a, gets to like give his two cents about the women's collection I, I think the guy has really great style were there other people that could have been a little bit 
of a better option? Probably. Probably. My only beef is he should have responded to someone that he worked with for such a long time and made such great music with um, after not necessarily her cry for help, but like after she mentioned it, you know, and now it's like people are looking at her crazy and maybe not. They're not maybe looking at her, but some people are, but it's just like, I feel like that conversation deserved a response because of their history together and what I thought was love that they would have for each other to respond to it or at least apologize or rebuild from it. And that's something that really irks me because that happens a lot, especially within the black and brown community. There's like very little room to have conversations about forgiveness and building and communicating better and all the things. So before I get into the last few details, like I usually do my eyebrows and my um, like a little bit of highlight and blush and stuff, let's get into the portion of this video. This is actually sponsored by our friends at Merit. And I do have a link for you guys below to order directly, but they sent me, they sent me their new flush bomb colors. Look how cute they look in these boxes. Your first order will come with this bag, which I think is perfect for travel or you can wear it for a really beautiful outfit. And you do get free shipping um, with orders over 40. So they sent me their new flesh bomb colors in color Stockholm and Apri. They are available in Sephora, but they have everything on their website, obviously. But Stockholm and Apri, I actually saw these in person already. So I know I love them. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a swatch test. So this is Apri. It's very plummy. It's very deep and luscious. And then we have Stockholm, which gives that pink vibe, which actually I'll probably wear this one today. I'll do this one later at night type of thing. And I can use this on a couple different areas of my face, but let's do a little, little swatch test on my skin. Look at that. Look at this color. That's a pre. And then we have Stockholm. Look at this. So pretty, right? All right, so let me be careful not to get my sweater on that. But I'm gonna go with Stockholm for the daytime right now. And plus, like I'm wearing this lighter, this lighter sweater. But I really love, oh my God. I'm looking in the mirror. I could see it better in the mirror. I love this balmy effect. Let's do it here. You'll probably see it better on this lighting. But you can just dab it on. Do a little over my nose here. And then we're gonna just tap it and blend it in. But you know what? I actually want to mix the two. Oh, it's dreamy. That's dreamy. I mean, I like it because, I mean, flush bomb and it gives a light flush. I'm here for it. I really like this. It's very, it's like, it's subtle, but you can still see the vibrance. It brings the vibrance out. I really like that. So I'll leave um, my affiliate link below. Thank you, Merit, for sponsoring this portion of the video. This is my first sponsorship on YouTube. <laughs> and I, I love this. 
I really, you know what? I like to mix both of them. And I feel like once I get my skin to a certain space where I'm not going to see like certain blemishes anymore, then I'll use Stockholm by itself, like with no makeup underneath it. And it'll be gorge. Yeah. BRB, my battery's dying. I need to charge up so we're finished together. BRB. Okay, so it's giving fresh skin. Like I almost even want to put like a little, like a little bit. I just really like that. Pop. And typically, I've been using like a powder one lately, so I just use this Jones Road um, blush. Is this a blush brush? Yeah, it is. Um, just to, she's she's stunning. She's stunning. I love this. This Merit Flush Bomb. Okay, ma'ams. Okay. Well, anyway. Um, so the last few details is my eyebrow. Now, I have ran out of my eyebrow pencil that I typically use, I, that I have been using. I don't think I'm going to use it anymore because I feel like she runs out really quickly and I don't, I don't love that for me. The Charlotte Tilbury, um, brow cheat. Yeah, she's already done. So we're just going to use Anastasia who yeah but this is not typically the, this isn't the typical um pencil that i actually use i use the pointed pencil not the angled one but i picked it up by accident it is what it is i'm not returning it so the brow situation is sometimes i take longer on them sometimes i don't but today i'm just gonna do it lightly I also got this little caddy from Amazon that everyone's been talking about and using for my makeup. And it comes with this mirror situation that you can hook on and do your do your work with. But um, she's kind of small. And I thought that I would be able to stand up certain pieces in the caddy. But everything has to go sideways. Like my concealers and stuff. I thought those would be able to stand up straight. But... She's a little shallow, but it's it's cool. I really like this. Um, I like the lighting. That's nice. So, yeah. Go really lightweight today. Those brows are going to fall anyway. <laughs> I don't care. My, my brows are just going to do what they want to do, and that's fine. That's the beauty of them. They like to not be tamed, and I'm here for that. I'm so here for it. Um, so I go ahead and do that. I already put my setting powder. The last step is my mascara, and I'm using the Jones Road, um, the best mascara, and I really do love it. Like it gives thickness and drama. I only really do like two coats, if that. Sometimes I just do the one. Like today, I might just do one. Um, and sometimes when I don't, when I have like a, a lot of time to do my makeup, I use two different mascaras. I'll do this one on the top. And the Dior, um, the Dior show iconic overcurl on the bottom because the wand is so much smaller. So I feel like I can get closer without messing myself up with having to remove any like extra mascara marks. <laughs> that I literally, I will use two different mascaras. It's actually really funny. Like, if doing the most was a person. Well, maybe, maybe more people, I don't know, maybe a lot more people do that than I'm assuming right now. Um, I like to have some of them pressed together and if I really have a lot of time, I'll take a tweezer and pinch them. But this is my overall 
latest routine. I think that it's super quick and simple. Highlights that make no makeup makeup type of look. Um, but it's still, I have to, I, I prefer to cover my spots. I do not like my spots to show much. And sometimes if I really want to like, if I still see some parts, I'll go back in with a different concealer just over top of what I did. And, but today I feel pretty good about it. I'm fine. Like, I really like this blush though. It's very like, look at the like little glow. And I don't, I don't put a lot of highlight on. I might put it here and like a little bit here, but I didn't put any highlight on anywhere. So this is nice and glowy. I really like that. Thank you, Merit, for sending that to me and sending this opportunity also to, to sponsor the video. Um, this is really cool. I love this. I love this. Don't forget, a pre in Stockholm are their newest colors. And I will have the affiliate link down below. And your first order, you will get that bag. And any order that is over $40, you do get free shipping. So, yeah. But I hope y'all like the video. Don't forget to click subscribe and like. Comment below what you do with your um, everyday makeup if you use some of these products. I'll also I'll leave the link to this. Um, but let me see if I can show you, but it is kind of shallow. Like I can't, I can't stand my Dior, my Dior concealer. Like I, I can, but the top, which is this mirror, it won't lay right. So I have to lay some of these pieces to the side. What will fit is the Fenty contour stick standing upright and the Bobbi Brown um, skin color corrector, but actually, no, can't even do that because of this, the thing I thought it was fitting at first, but yeah, everything has to go on its side in there, unless it's like a low dish situation. And I like the fact that you can put in the mirror in the slot and do your thing. You can also twist this around. I'm sure a lot of y'all saw this already, but just in case you haven't. And you can also stand it up that way, which I think is pretty cool. So, like I said, I'll leave the link below. Let me know if y'all have any questions. I'll see y'all on Tuesday. We will be reviewing the runway shows. Bye. Have a good weekend.